Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and people. It's Fuller Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a special guest. Everyone's a special guest, and this is kind of like a random episode. Uh, you know, we didn't think we were going to record today, but we did. I'm joined by Emma Mankin. Now, you know me. I work at George Mason, uh, without saying, and I work in career services. And there's always these opportunities where I get to meet students. And usually those appointments, I just meet them once or twice. But then sometimes I actually build a relationship, and we meet over and over again. And then they graduate and go out in the world, and they stay in touch with me. And so Emma is one of those students, really, just, I don't know. Uh, honestly, this is the first time we met in person. Uh, we, we actually developed a relationship uh, during COVID. Um, and so I have her coming back. She came back to visit Mason, uh, you know, check out what's going on on campus. And I said, hey, well, why don't we do a podcast? So before we get into this uh, episode, uh, Emma, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm happy to be here. Um, my name is Emma Mankin, as Phil just said. I graduated from George Mason University in May 2021 with a Bachelor of Arts in English with a concentration in Writing and Rhetoric and a minor in American Sign Language. Just after graduation, I, my family and I moved to St. Augustine, Florida, so my brother can attend um, Flagler College um, in the city, and I've been trying to figure out my way like through the mysterious world of job hunting and finding myself a career. That's it. I mean, that's really excellent. And it's very interesting, like, legit, like, uh, you, you know, had this major transition of moving, but also graduating uh, during a pandemic. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that feeling, like, you know, tell us a little, like, take us back in the time machine. What was your last few semesters like? Uh, You know, you said you graduated in 21. So you, you, I think you had two experiences. You had a actual pre-COVID experience at Mason and then transitioning that. So take us through that story about like being on campus, being involved. I know you in the green machine and then that chan- you know, change into a COVID world. Talk, talk about that. Absolutely. So I started at George Mason in August of 2017. So I was in the green machine all four years. I started off undeclared, but by the end of my freshman year, I chose my major to be English and I do not regret that decision one bit. Um, throughout Throughout my time here, I was also very involved, not only in the Green Machine, but um, the summer between my sophomore and junior years here, I started working as an event assistant through um, Mason's Event Services, um, pretty much like uh, supporting events and Mm -hmm. providing friendly customer services while also making myself aware of pretty much all the events and event spaces that we have at Mason. So I was involved, like, through the Green Machine, I played violin. I was the section leader for, I think, two years, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, I was involved in a lot of, like, the Mesa Madness event and also, like, the, the spring preview and fall events for prospective students and admitted students as well. Um, But then about three quarters of the way through my junior year, which is like three years ago, right about now, COVID hit and pretty much took us all home. So for like the last little over a year of my college life, I was pretty much online. Uh But I mean, since I had an English degree, like, and I was working towards it, like it didn't, it it didn't make a whole lot of a, a big deal, like, because I mean, a lot of the work, be it reading and writing and things like that, were always, like, pretty much independent work. But but thankfully, like, through resources like Discord and um, Google Meets and even Blackboard discussion boards, you know, we could make it happen. Yeah. But, I mean, but the thing is, I mean, I think we're talking about the holistic experience because I think when we met, right, we were doing counseling. You were actually living in Florida at that time, right? That's right. And so all these fun things, though, were were like you had the class in English and you graduated and all that but how about that you weren't able to participate in Green Machine still or were you still able to like because I think they still did some stuff with Green Machine like talk about that like or the event the the job that you had as an event assistant obviously that stopped during COVID so you had still the curriculum and academic piece but 
talk about that, you know, maybe that campus or holistic experience, was that hard to navigate? Okay, so, like, with these two things, like, especially, like, with Green Machine, like, we were still in touch through Blackboard. We still Mm -hmm. met on Zoom, like, during our typical class time, which was Tuesday nights from 7.20 to 10. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes we would um, talk about music. Sometimes we would um, watch videos of, like, past performances. I mean, we still, like, built those relationships and communicated a lot like during that time, especially in like the fall of 2020 and spring mm-hmm. of 2021 semester. So I, w- I could still see my friends, even though it was just through a little screen. tiny picture on the screen through Zoom. But then actually at the beginning of my last semester, um, one of my friends who was in the spirit drum line had said at the end of a rehearsal um, that they were looking for more people to to join and if you didn't need to be like in let's say drumline in high school or been in band since you know fifth grade or something like that but anybody could join and I thought you know why not I try it so I went to their first rehearsal um, ended up seeing a couple of my green machine friends who were also involved in the spirit drumline um, got to know the professor a little bit more and he assigned me to play cymbals that semester and I, it was definitely an interesting experience to like play an instrument that I'm not super familiar with and didn't really know much about other than maybe like those little tiny symbols you have as a kid or something. But it definitely was really fun to try something new, get out of the house a little bit. Like that was my only on campus, like in person class my senior year, but I made the most of it and I still got to perform at the admitted students day um, right before I graduated, so that was really fun. Um, And then for event services, um, we still had, we still had some work to do. Like, Mm -hmm. I didn't actually work my first semester of senior year um, because, you know, not knowing what the COVID guidelines would be Mm -hmm. at that point, my parents didn't really want me like exposing myself, especially because they're, you know, in their, they were in their like probably early 60s at the time which they still are, um, but we didn't want to like expose, expose each other, and that was before we had the vaccines and, and, and in that time. So, But eventually, like um, winter break of 2021, I went back and worked. Like We would have like these blocks of time for like A shifts and B shifts of like, A shifts would be like from 7 a.m. to I think one in the afternoon, if I'm not mistaken, and then B shifts would be like, 12 to 6 so so at that time like we would kind of monitor the buildings like take some surveys of like how many people were on each floor of the JC and even still like lock up like unlock and lock doors and make sure that events were still supported like say in the hub ballroom or Dewberry Hall so we still had some events going on on campus like even also outside like because at the time, like, it was easier to have an event outside and not, like, have everybody in an enclosed yeah. space to possibly, like, spread Expose COVID. Yeah, spread COVID. Exactly. So, like, so what I'm hearing is uh, you were, like, exhibiting resilience. You were still involved, and you still, like, maybe got that Mason experience. Uh, and I'm not going to say watered down because, I mean, obviously it was still Mason, but it was it, you just had to be flexible and still feel like you got uh, – involved in the green machine you still got involved with events and then you know still did your classwork so you still felt like you had to make do and have a actual college experience right absolutely um one of my thoughts is i think during that time we met too you started to transition and write a little bit for yourself was it during this time you started the blog right that's right i started my own blog called emma reflects which is a wordpress blog that i've had since the summer of 2021 right between the time i graduated from college and i moved to florida like i really started this blog as a way to really put my writing experience out get some writing samples out instead of just like having a writing assignment have maybe like two people read it and turn it in for a grade so it was really it's a space that I can use to like write about like life reflections, maybe write some poetry here and there, and also to really like connect with readers and showcase my writing skills. Yeah, so I think you did that to su- not say supplement, but to complement your degree. Um, did you ever like, uh, and we never talked about it, did you ever write for like Fourth Estate or anything during, during JMU? Or like this blog creation was like the new venture? Well, I actually had a blogging um, experience like 
probably like by the time I was maybe a senior in high school, but I only post remember posting on it maybe like two or three times, like just with, you know, trying to graduate high school and take classes. And you know, I was in orchestra throughout <laughs> my four years of high school. So it kind of like went to the went to the side for a little bit, but actually in my English 101 class in 2018, like part of um, one of our assignments was to actually have a blogger blog and mm-hmm. post, I think it was maybe 12 times like throughout the semester. So oh, yeah. I got really into like the habit of blogging and putting out pictures and editing and anything that goes into that habit. And that, and really, I really built a hobby in it. So, especially when I was in college, I thought about like, okay, I wanted to. Now that I have a degree, I wanted to really just, you know, start fresh. You know, use what I've got, all the editing, the writing, the um, photography skills that I have, and put them all together in a new blog. So that's how Emma Reflex came about. So, do you remember the, who was the teacher for that class? I believe it was Shante Robinson. I want to say shout out because like they, like maybe in a French, like a roundabout way it was for class, but it was like that was like like actual career development, right? They're like like we're gonna make you do a blog for class, but then like this could be a tangible skill for for uh, actually a career or writing, right? So you know, think about it now. Do you think like wow, like do you see that connection of that was just a you know English one on one assignment, but now you can see the career implications of that. Absolutely, especially now that I have a degree in writing and rhetoric, like it definitely was a stepping stone for my blogging experiences and how I'm really glad that I had that assignment to really get myself back into blogging and the habit and creating content that I can pretty much like showcase to my readers, to my LinkedIn followers, my Facebook friends, um, and really just the people I know in my life. So let's talk about your graduating, right? And obviously we saw each other. And yes. And we were talking about how you leverage that that creative experience. So maybe take us back, like, how have you leveraged these different aspects of you to still navigate post-grad life? So, like, what I mean by that is how have you leveraged or used your experience getting an English degree? How have you used your experience being involved with the Green Machine or event services? And how have you used your experience writing blogs to kind of promote yourself, you know, as someone to work this is actually a really interesting question so like I said like with an English degree I'm very glad that I have the the different professional writing skills and the editing skills the communication really a lot of like soft skills that I can take and apply pretty much anywhere I don't need to be like so you know tunnel visioned into you know just one career path and that's it like it's very good to have all these different options that I can go into maybe a couple of different paths like and that's a def- that I can never say I'll never use my degree because anybody could use writing like especially in even if it's just something like email etiquette like it's really appropriate to know um, what's appropriate like with your genre your audience and your purpose for writing certain certain pieces um, especially because you know you're going to be writing it's not just like oh like you can just like use slang or something in like Facebook posts but it's definitely a different mindset like and I always try to use like you know the proper grammar the the spelling like I get a little freaked out if I even like spell a word wrong or whatever like even on anything I write but I definitely see myself using writing in some form or fashion whether it be like I'm kind of interested also like with these skills, like I've gotten into um, social media coordination, so mm-hmm. that whole that all started last January when my aunt, who lives in Massachusetts, gave me an opportunity to help her out with her busy schedule to um, schedule social media posts for one of her realtor clients' uh, friends out in Cal- in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. So through this, like, it started off as um, we would schedule um, daily posts throughout the month that would include anything along the lines of, like, real estate tips, like, you know, when to move, like, what to look for, and especially, like, because it was relevant, because I had just moved, like, even though it was my first time moving at 22 years old, like, a lot of it was still fresh in my brain, and it was, like, even though it applied more, she mainly works with senior uh, real estate clients, but... Mm -hmm. A lot of these are very good to know, like, especially in the future, like, say, if I move out on my own and, you know, I'm, I'm older, but also, like, 
getting back to it, like with those, in addition to those real estate tips, like she also spotlights local businesses and local um, attractions, whether it be like places to hike or um, say if it was like National Popcorn Day or something, like, you know, this is a great place to get like Popcorn. this and celebrate. Mm -hmm. So I got into that and now it's like we've just transitioned from like 30, 31, depending on the number of days in the month. Um, posts each day so of the month so now it's just like 15 per month so it's really like a couple days a week but I've really gotten into um, the interest in like social media coordination and writing posts knowing what is important information to include especially because like different platforms have like different requirements especially because like Twitter has their character limit character limit um, Instagram has like a photo requirement where you can only have like square images like yeah. well not so much anymore but like typically we post in squares um and it's just a matter of like it has to be sized a little bit differently than say like the linkedin the twitter and the facebook posts so you're understanding like what you, basically what you're saying and this is what i'm thinking about your english degree coming in the, in the play is that your content needs to be what one relevant to the audience so you're tracking the audience and two, it needs to be formatted. Like, in my mind, like, thinking about social media, like, the same way you think about APA format or MLA, like, these are different stylistics. So you're taking that degree of English and learning how to adapt not only the format of your content, but also the, the context of your format. And that's where that English and writing comes in. And also, like, no grammar. Ash. Like, you like, make sure, like, my post got good spelling and writing. But yes. I, I can see that connection. What, yeah. about, what about the connection of the, you know, in regards to you're writing your blog or um, the blog or maybe even the event assistant. How do you how do you believe that kind of plays out to your career in some aspect? Okay, so like with the event services, like it really gave me um, great communication skills, mm -hmm. like quick problem solving skills. And I, I got to work with a lot of different people on different levels, whether it be like fellow students or supervisors or club sponsors um, and really get in the habit of working with different types of people on mm -hmm. different levels. Like, um, especially yeah. when it comes to like, I had a really great sense of like, awareness of my community with everything that was going on at a given time and mm -hmm. like really learning how to um, work in different um, environments and really get people motivated to feel excited about events like mm -hmm. actually just this past fall um, my new community started a book club and I'm one of the original four members um, with this we actually formed a Facebook group that we um, promote in the community Facebook pages and we meet once a month um, pick a book to read like talk about it throughout our meetings like it's been a really great way to get to know um, some other people who might live in a different phase of the community because there are a couple of different like phases of like I live in the first phase like I've got two other ladies who live in the second phase and one who lives like in the phase all the way in the back but really get to like get in the um, habit of like promoting those um, events like you know figure out like how to coordinate with people um, and at the end of every meeting we actually like take a vote like we get together maybe like three or four books that maybe look interesting or are, are popular these days and create a poll through our book club Facebook group um, to say, okay, you know, vote on this by Sunday, let's say, um, and here are your choices. Like, if you want to research the plot, like, go for it. And then whichever book gets the most votes is going to be our next read. So we actually just got... Uh, approval to use our new amenity center, which has just opened in the last couple mm -hmm. of months. The and space. You know about space management now. Oh, and yes. How to book rooms and book spaces like the amenity center. Absolutely. So especially because we, we have to um, email the, the man who's in charge of like the amenities and say like, you know, we want to meet at in the amenity center at, um, event room from like this time to that time, like on March 23rd, like, which is our next meeting. Um, and so it's really a matter of, like, reserving the space and, like, knowing that, like, you know, you need to be there, like, a little bit beforehand to have your key and get the, the space ready, leave it as clean as possible. Not that we, like, bring a lot of, like, you know, junk in there, but at least, like, knowing to really get the space and leave it clean while also having a good time. And it seems like 
we've all enjoyed it so far in the last couple of months. So I'm, I'm saying definite connections, right? Like your event management, basically you're doing events in the community. So that matches English, your writing. So talk about that last one, about the blog creation. How do you think that plays out? I mean, I'm really seeing all these skills inadvertently through just your experiences that you built at Mason. What about the blog? How do you think that plays out into your career and how you promote yourself and, you know, what you want to do? So I talked about um, Emma Reflex as, like, a way to really get myself back into writing as a, as a postgraduate now. Um, like, it has definitely, and thanks to Phil, like, I've also, like, learned to make a little bit more of a consistent schedule. Like, instead of just posting, yeah, one here and there when I feel like it, maybe try to aim for a few posts a month. Like, typically now I try to write maybe, like, two or three times a month like eventually if I have like a, a set of prompts which I'm working on right now like maybe I could do it like once a week or once every other week or something like that but thanks to Phil like I've gotten into more of a schedule instead of just like kind of mm, okay but thankfully like with my blog I'm very like flexible with like my different topics because I don't, I don't always want to be like okay I only want to talk about writing or oh, I only want to talk about like maybe a, a new place that I found or something like that I try to add variety like when you go on my blog you'll see like the menu and you'll see like anything from reflections to poetry to life advice and I also write poems about holidays here and there and reshare them year after year for the when they come around. And when you say menu, man, you tag them, right? So, I, I'll, I'll, yeah, because I, I mean, obviously, you know, I always appreciate it. Like, you kept me in the loop. I read your poems. You know, I share them when I can, um, especially, shout out to that. But, like, are you really, like, you, you tag them, right, so that you can see the different categories? Absolutely. And this is a great way to add to the organization, like, especially because, like, maybe there are a couple of diff there are some common themes, like, in some of my posts. Like, and that way I can go back and kind of see my themes about, like, reflections or about learning or whatever it may be. And uh, last question, like, have you actually, like, you know, I, I know you got into social media coordination. Uh, did you ever, like, say, okay, you know, I got my resume, got my cover letter, check out a few of my blog posts? Have you ever just, like, used that to market yourself? Like, well, like you know, like when they say, like, submit, you know, for application, did you, do you submit and share some of your blog posts? Absolutely. Like, especially, like, when they ask for a couple of different, like, additional documents besides just, like, the resume and maybe an occasional cover letter, I always add, like, a, the link to my blog, like, in case they want to see, like, say, a personal URL or something like that, like, or even I might just, like, go through and, like, find maybe one of the links to one of my blog posts and share those, like, especially if I think it's relevant to the job, like, whether it be writing or about social media or, like, post-grad life or something like that. I definitely like to market myself by putting some of my work out there so people can read it and know what's going on in my life and know that, like, I'm very in tune with, like, lifelong learning because learning doesn't stop after college like it my one of my favorite quotes of all time that I used as my senior quote and I'll use it as my favorite quote for the rest of my life is a B.B. King quote and it says the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you and it's very true like because you learn just from experience like I always have this philosophy that everybody is a teacher and to some extent or another like you don't always have to have like you know a master's in education to just teach somebody something new and like even just teaching from experience is a great way to learn from somebody else especially if it's in your field or um, something you want to do or something like that like if you're new to the area um, and LinkedIn has actually provided like some opportunities for me to share my posts to really connect with people like say with Phil and some of his connections like just in the last when was it few months yeah the LinkedIn the LinkedIn engagement engagement pod yeah <laughs> that's right so he got a couple of connections together and we have on and off months of like where we can share content and engage with it and share links to our group me chat um, to really get to know each other is like using it as a network site and it's been really great to really get to know people who are maybe writers or um, in career development or really any kind of field to really get to know um, people build th that network add some more connections and really get into the habit of like engaging and commenting on posts and sharing content 
Yeah, I love it. And so, you know, we're going to, the last aspect before we go to our last segment, uh, go back in the time machine or not go in a time machine, you know, <laughs> mentor someone. What would be some advice that you would give to someone? I like this, particularly English. What would be some advice you would give to that, that freshman English major? What should they do to get started? You know, like, what can they do as a freshman to just be better prepared for careers after college? Absolutely. So I remember with the English degree, there are like maybe, I think, seven different concentrations last I heard about. Like, and don't limit yourself to just your concentration. Like, say, if you're majoring in literature, don't make, like, focus on just, like, becoming a literature ma like major and think that's the only thing I can do. Like, really build your writing skills, build your communication skills, like, really take some interesting classes, maybe even outside of your concentration, or if you're double concentrating, like, really make sure that you have, like, a lot of different avenues that, like, you can take with you wherever you go after college, and definitely build, like, resumes, like, even, like, class projects are great. Like, in the past, I've also put, like, some of my proposal writing, um, class projects as like experience because you can say you can have a section on the resume that says like relevant experience um and definitely like get in get on linkedin start making connections with people you know and like reach out to people who um you think would be a great person to talk to like especially in terms of a of finding a career and figuring out like you know what you want your next steps to be um I definitely am very passionate about, like, you know, having an English degree is not something you'll regret because you can take it with you in anywhere you go. Like, I've, even though I thought, like, maybe I was going to do, like, proposal writing after college, like, I've also kind of expanded my options to, like, social media and marketing. So it's really, these are skills that you can really... Use everywhere. Use anywhere. It's funny because, uh, interesting enough, my father-in-law, who recently passed... Uh, was an English major at UVA, and wow. what he did with it is actually he worked in nonprofits and was like a co community organizer. But now I go back in hindsight, but he was an amaz he was an amazing writer. Um, he wrote everything. He was creative writing. And he was still he wrote. He always edited. He was like my editor in chief when we lived together. So I, I think about that in the future, right? How that English degree from UVA pivoted in his life went completely different. Like he literally is an example of how you can be an English major and go anywhere. So shout out to that. And I'm a history major, so shout out to chess in general. Anyone in chess, uh, shout out to the liberal arts. Like, you can use these degrees. You don't have to worry about, you know, find your place. You know, look at look at us too. So we're at our next part of the show. It's called Shot for Shot. Uh, you get to ask me any random question. I get to ask you any random question. You want to go first, I go first. Okay, so... Oh, you ready? Okay, you going to go first. All right, go ahead. All right. So what do you think has been the best part of... Uh, working in career services during your time at Mason? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, it would be funny to say it's not like actual career services. Uh, <laughs> it's actually the actual getting involved at Mason, uh, meeting students like yourself. I think the community aspect. So I love career services, but I think just the macro part is I actually enjoy just being involved and meeting people throughout Mason. And I, I love how you said the different stakeholders. Like, I think it's just different people I've gotten to meet working at Mason, uh, students, other staff members, um, professors, faculty. Uh, it's like a little mini town. And, Absolutely. And I, I always joke that life is like one big high school. <laughs> um, and there is, there's cop, you know, there's popular kids and cool kids and different cliques. But even in high school, I was the same way as I am now. I just I didn't adhere to um, any of that. Like I was taking IB classes, and but I, I just talked to anybody and everybody. I and and. I wouldn't say, quote, unquote, I was popular, like, <laughs> as in a person that, like, oh, yeah, I want to be like Philip, but I was more so, like, popular in the sense that I got along with pretty much everybody, and I feel like that's the same kind of vibe I get here at Mason, is that I'm not, quote, unquote, like, the cool kid or the one that people always aspire to be, right. um, but I'm more so just a person that talks to anybody and likes to learn, and I get to meet new people all the time, so I think that's my favorite aspect, honestly. That's great. Yeah. All right. So, English, uh, poems, all that. Who is someone that you could read for days on end? Like, who's one of your favorite authors or poets or whatever? Um, and I know it's a big question, so like, you, can, <laughs> you can say, like, at this moment, my favorite is. You don't have to like, say your whole life, but, like, who's someone that you love to, because like, I know reading, who, who, who's someone you just love to read their, their work? Oh, gosh, that's a, a really interesting question, because, like, especially being in part of the book club for the last six months, like, I've mm -hmm. gotten to really um, read different authors and mm -hmm. popular books, um, 
just in a short amount of time. Like, I've always been inspired by um, just, like, the first book we read was um, Taylor Jenkins Reads Daisy Jones and the Six, which is um, a book that's based on, like, a fictional band called Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, it's kind of a Fleetwood Mac-inspired 70s band, and, like, it's told in an interview style um, of, Ooh. like, kind of the rise and fall of their time as a band and even just the characters individual like she uh, Taylor Jenkins Reed um, is a really amazing author who has great de um, character development and um, I also read another one of her books called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which ironically actually um, came out like right around the time I graduated from high school in 2017 and this one is a historical fiction book about Kind of like based off of Elizabeth Taylor's lives with the seven oh, marriages okay. and okay. kind of like touching on like, you know, the, the not just the acting career, but also like, you know, each husband she was married to like throughout her life. Um, I really am, am inspired like to see, you know, stories that they share. Yes, absolutely, especially because they're kind of historical, like I'm into music, I like writing. So it kind of like ties a lot of like those interests into one and actually um daisy jones the six is a new um, amazon prime i saw that okay now I was, I was about to write i was like is that the one i saw so that's cool so yes writing turns into to you know pictures all the time too awesome awesome so this has been a great uh episode um this is the part of the show where i'll say shout outs and plugs so please provide any shout outs meaning show love to anyone you want to show love to and then plugs these are the ways that either like you said, you're a blog, but ways that you feel comfortable with people getting connected with you. I'll make sure to put that in the show notes. So the stage is yours. Shout outs and plugs. Thank you very much. Oh, go ahead. No, you get to share. Okay. Uh, like shout outs and plugs. Uh, you get to share like um, who you want to shout out. Like I want to shout out my mom, my dad. And then plugs is like you can follow me here. Okay. So I want to um, send a shout out not only to Phil for having me on my podcast, on his podcast, but um, also to shout out to my family and friends who are listening. Um, thank you for all your support. Um, thank you for listening. And you can follow me on Instagram and at Emma99Mankin. And you can find me on Facebook and LinkedIn. Read my blog, Emma Reflects at WordPress. And um, Thank you very much for having me, Phil. Well, that's excellent. I'm definitely going to put that in the show notes. I think one of the things I have uh, been very inspired by this student, now alum, because now we're fellow alum together, that's is right. that she did not wait to create. And I think she held firm to that. Uh, she was consistent. And obviously, you know, sometimes when you create something, it's not going to be uh, immediately visible. But it's still, it's still worth your time because, one, it builds a skill. And two, it, it just gets you in the habit of being creative. We have to think about expressing our creativity as an inward, intrinsic thing rather than always getting, you know, visible external things, right? Like you go through, the, like I have this podcast, she has her blog. And so she's someone that took that to heart and just ran with it. And I've just been inspired by her commitment and consistency that she actually keeps me accountable to being consistent with my podcast. Um, positive Filter listeners. As you know, every single episode is dedicated to the honor of my father-in-law, my late father-in-law, Jeff Kirsch. So in the show notes is the Jeff Kirsch Anti-Hunger Fund. Uh, please consider contributing to that. Um, please share this episode with a family member or friend. Uh, if you're on iTunes, give this a rating or review or Spotify that elevates the podcast. Please share it. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Positive Filter is on all platforms. So we have a you know, great day. Please take care of yourself. And we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends, and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.